What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is season five, week three of the GBA, and this is the locker room where we go over the team that we're going to be bringing in our battle this week. Uh, today, we're going to be battling Old Man Tup and the Pittsburgh Piratitas, and so I'm going to go over the team that I brought with you guys so you can kind of see my thought process behind uh, my impression of his team what uh, my biggest fears are with his team and how this is going to develop my team building for uh, this matchup and the future matchups I'm going to have against him. So uh, I'll go over the six that I'm bringing first and then we'll kind of talk about them a little bit more in depth. As you can see here, I'm bringing Nato Nato the Hippowdon, Cuddles the Mega Pincer, Nightman the... Uh, actually, I'm, I, think I, re I think I changed his name, guys. I think I ended up calling him Trip. <laughs> so let's make that change now. Trip, the um, the Amoongus, Zoolander, the Vaporeon, Decisions, the Entei, and Remix, the Ditto. Um, so, first of all, I, I did my analysis of his team, I ran some calcs. Um, defensively, I'm not particularly concerned with any of his Pokémon. Um, his reliable, re the Mons on his team with reliable recovery don't stand up all that well to my Pokémon. Uh, in particular, things like say, uh, and, uh, a defensive Arcanine, who does have reliable recovery, doesn't like a stone edge from, uh, from Decisions of the Entei. Entei's a pretty good switch into Arcanine, because Arcanine can't do a whole lot to it. Uh, a banded offensive variant can hit him pretty hard with, um, with E-Speed, but outside of that, it's not too bad of a matchup for me. And the defensive one, of course, if he doesn't get the Intimidate off on me, isn't in that great shape. So um, that's kind of my thought process there. The other Pokemon with reliable recovery on his team, Jellicent. Jellicent doesn't really do anything and is very much walled by two of my, uh, two of the Mons that I've chosen to bring today. Celebi, um, it's a lot dependent on his set. He could be an offensive set, he could be a defensive support set, a ton passer, um, but I will have options for him too. So that was my thought process there. I'm not a big, really scared of his wall, so how can I develop my team to be good against... Uh, he has a pretty good matchup against me, not gonna lie. He has a pretty good matchup against me. Um, so let's look at his offensive threats and see kind of how I can respond to that. First of all, nobody's going anywhere without discussing the uh, the big elephant in the room. He has got uh, an Excadrill that could be potentially running Sand Force or Sand Rush um, in uh, in a sandstorm. Uh, he has the a means of setting that up on his own with Tyranitar and well, and then his Mega Evolution to Mega Tyranitar. And uh, also, he might think that Hippowdon will be setting it up for him. That said, I'm obviously not going to do that, because that gives him a very powerful sweeper. Uh, so, as you can see, Nato Nato, the first Mon that I've opted to bring is Sand Force, not... Um, what is even the name of that ability? Sand Stream, because there's no way I'm going to give him free sand. I, I just can't do that. If he's going to be setting up sand for himself, then it benefits Nato Nato kind of immensely. So my set for him is uh, fully... This is not right at all. <laughs> I don't know why that would be that way, so I changed that. Uh, his set is going to be physically defensive with 252 HP and 252 defense. This ensures an odd number for the HP with maximum investment in HP and defense. He's impish, of course, and I put the remaining four points in attack because there's no speed tier that I hit that's special by getting an extra point here and there. Uh, if he's going to speed creep Nato Nato, it's not that actually that big of a deal because he doesn't really care that much about him. The moves I'm opting to bring are Earthquake, Rock Slide, Stealth Rock, and Slack Off. Now, the reason I'm going for these moves on Nato Nato, Earthquake obviously is his primary stab. It hits... Excadrill and Mega Tyranitar very hard, and I am. These are two Pokemon I desperately need to be able to switch into. Uh, the calcs that I've run have that a choice banded Sand Rush uh, Adamant uh, Excadrill cannot two hit KO me. However, there is a chance after leftover recovery, a chance that a an Adamant. Sand Force Earthquake can kill me, if he's Choice Banded, um, or if he's Life Orb. So, 
the kind of the consideration that comes in here is if I switch into that right away, I need to determine his item. I need to determine his set. If he's sand force adamant, I need to I need to reconsider the game plan of who's going to switch in next. Uh, it might the option my only option might be to sack Nato Nato. That's a possibility. Um, but that said. It's risky for him to run that set, because that means that I outspeed him with basically every other mon, including decisions. Making decisions the easiest answer in the world for uh, for revenge killing him. Uh, we're going to look at my other walls here. The, the rock slide is to uh, one-hit KO a potential thunderous switch in on the switch after rocks. Um, it also is both of those moves are boosted by the sand force ability stealth rocks because i think rocks are going to be good for his team i don't think excadrill is going to be even if it packs rapid spin i don't think he's going to be going for it much because once excadrill comes in he has a limited amount of time to get a good attack off before he gets fully walled by by hippowdon um next we're going into cuddles cuddles the mega pincer running hyper cutter because it's the only one that makes sense for him in the gba format running return quick attack close combat and swords dance Kind of debated with a couple other things here, Earthquake maybe over Swords Dance in the last spot, but I just have such good switch-ins to an Arcanine that I, I didn't think that I really needed it. Uh, he's running the Jolly Max Speed set just to force him to speed creep me on any Mon uh, that, he, that he feels necessary. Return does great to his team, it does really, really well, um, nets a couple of very crucial uh, Okos or two hit KOs uh, after, or and especially after rocks. Cuddles is going to be kind of my late game sweeper here, but if I can see an opportunity to bring him in on a mon that can't really threaten him much, and I can pop up a Swords Dance, then Cuddles is going to be absolutely devastating his team. He's my primary offensive answer to a Machamp, uh, regardless of the set. Even if it's a bulk up set, and I can get Cuddles in here, uh, he can still one hit KO after rocks uh, when he's at plus two. So, Cuddles is my answer there. Quick Attack, because he's got a lot of Pokemon on his team that actually outspeed me, and if I need the priority there, it's going to be really important. Close Combat, of course, hits the Excadrill and the Tyranitar, both Mons that resist my stab super effectively. Uh, it's worth noting that none of these moves um, hit... Uh, either my stab or my coverage moves do not hit Thunderous neutrally. Uh, they're both resisted. However, Return is still... Um, a really good move to use against Thunderous. If I pop off the return and he takes Stealth Rock damage and then I get a quick attack off, he dies anyway. So I'm not too worried about him unless he's a truly defensive set, but then I'll be able to scout that and I will have answers to it anyway. Uh, we have Trip the Amoongus. He's running an Assault Vest Regenerator set with Sludge Bomb, Grass Knot, Clear Smog, and Foul Play. Grass Knot allows me to two-hit KO uh, a Jellicent, uh, making me a good Jellicent switch in. Uh, my Poison type will be a uh, really helpful if he's opting to run Toxic on anybody, so I get a free switch in there. Sludge Bomb is a two-hit KO against Thunderous. Clear Smog is in, is in case Thunderous decides to set up on me, and Foul Play is in case he thinks that he can get uh, get a free switch into someone like uh, Excadrill, because a two-hit KO is Excadrill also, who would otherwise resist or be immune to uh, one of my stabs and the other one won't do all that much to him. So, uh, Grass Knot's also a really good um, option for me against Mega T-Tar uh, on the Switch, and Regenerator pivoting for me is going to be really big, especially if he's going to try and make a lot of dangerous switches. So, Trip's going to be kind of one of my primary special walls in this game. Zoolander being the other one. Um, now, I'm not 100% sold on running weakness policy here, but I'll talk about it a little bit. A modest life orb Thunderous will not one-hit KO with a Thunderbolt on Zoolander, and there could be a situation where I could get a baton past weakness policy off to someone, and that could very well, very potentially win me the game if I if I succeed at that, uh, if it happens kind of late enough. Running Scald, Baton Pass, Wish, and Heal Bell. The reason for this set is that it completely walls... Um, it completely walls Kyurem. Kyurem is a little bit of a risk to my team because Ice-type is not bad against me. 
That said, it's going to be really important to kind of scout what he is early. If he is Specs, he fails to two-hit KO me even with um, uh, Draco Media. If he's Life Orb and he goes for Draco, uh, I can also I can see I can detect what he is based on his damage and the response on this item. See if he's going to switch up moves. Um, it's, this resists his ice type stab. I can also resist that with decisions the Entei. And it just really gives me kind of a, a safe position to be in there. Baton pass will net me, obviously, the ability to pass that weakness policy. I'm not sure if that's going to work, really. But, um, and you know, I'm, I'm going to think about it a little bit uh, before the battle. I might switch that out to leftovers. That's kind of my two options I'm thinking there. Um, Wish and Heal Bell just to give me Cleric options. I'm not running Wish Protect here because I think I can be cheeky. I don't think he's going to be ballsy enough to stay in against me, against a Zoolander that he can't really do anything with. Uh, he could be running the subset if that's the case. Scald won't two-hit KO, but if he's the subset, he also can't even get close to killing me easily. Um, maybe, maybe like a four-hit KO um, on a subset, so I'm really not that concerned about the Q room, thanks to Zoolander. Decisions, uh, a relatively standard set here. Choice, Band, Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge, Iron Head. Um, just to give me massive coverage to as many things as possible. Sacred Fire obviously hits like an absolute truck with an adamant 252 Choice Band. He's going to have a pretty difficult time figuring out what to switch in on, on Decisions here. So, my main... My main move with Decision is to either pop off some Sacred Fires and get some burns in the early game, maybe predict some switches and try and go for some clutch 2-hit KOs. A physically defensive Jellicent is his best answer to this Entei on a defensive scale, but even he doesn't want to take two stone edges, and I have an amazing switch into him anyway. Uh, especially if I'm able to net the burn on him at an early time, because uh, I don't see him having any realistic cleric abilities for this match, but, you know, I could be wrong. Um, if he's opting to switch in, say, a defensive guts Machamp against this guy, Sacred Fire will two-hit KO and he can't outspeed me. Uh, so, so, that's the set I'm going for here. My last move is Remix, and here's the reason for this. Dragon Dance T-Tar um, is a pretty big threat. He also has the potential to start setting up nasty plots with his Thunderous. He could be Swords Dance Excadrill. He could be Bulk Up Machamp. Um, he could be a Baton Passing Setup Celebi. And Remix will threaten all of those setup opportunities. Um, especially in situations where he gets a kill and I get to actually revenge with Remix. I could switch in on some of these setup abilities and it would help me out a lot, especially if I got a baton pass into them from Zoolander. But that said, uh, if he sets up... If the sand is up and he is ballsy enough to go for a Swords Dance on his Excadrill and Ditto comes in on the revenge, uh, in the sand, Choice Scarf Excadrill with plus two is going to absolutely annihilate his entire team. Very similar set uh, for Thunderous. I'm opting to run as the Hidden Power IVs here, uh, fighting. Uh, the main reason for that being that if I come in on a plus two Thunderous, uh, I could kill him with the Thunderbolt, and I think he'll know that, and I think he'll switch, and I can predict that and go straight away for the uh, for the Hidden Power fighting, which would take out. Uh, the only lightning was, or immunity on his team, which would be Excadrill. So, that's kind of my move there with Remix. He's uh, also a pretty good pivot into other Pokemon, like Jellicent. So that's going to be my team for this week, guys. It looks like I'm getting hit up on uh, Skype. So it looks like it's time for, uh, for the battle to begin pretty soon. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Leave me a like, comment, rate, sub, whatever you guys want to do in the in the description-y, annotation-y area down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.